A very good evening and welcome to Prime Time News live here on News First. I'm Mahina Bongzo. Good evening and welcome. I am Shahin Drampati and let's take a look at tonight's headlines. Postal voting for the presidential election to commence tomorrow. Special police protection plan in place. Ministry of Defence states that the three armed forces and police are prohibited from engaging in any political activity apart from voting. Several development programs under the Umaoya project vested with the people. Sajid Premadasa speaks of officials under his government. Mahinda Raja Paksha to be Gota's Prime Minister, government to be established immediately after elections. Basanta Senanayaka says he will support Sajid, challenges the UNP to remove him. Well, for those stories in detail, Prime Minister Ronald Vikramasinghe convened a media briefing at Temple Trees this morning. Oh, Presidential candidate of the New Democratic Front, Sajid Premadasa, had this to say. We have only confirmed one position of our government so far. I have only made a decision about national security and law and order. I have given it to Sarat Fonseca who has rendered a great service to the nation by winning the war. I ask the people of this country to take that appointment as an example. That's the standard I have set when it comes to making appointments. I have set that bar high. Anybody who robbed the country will not be appointed with my signature. I responsibly state that I will give appointments to the rest only after I check if the person is clean and free of fraud and corruption. During a media briefing today, General Secretary of the United People's Freedom Alliance, Mahinda Amravira, expressed the following views. After Gotabe Rajpaksa assumes duties as the president, we cannot proceed with a UNP government. So Rane Vikramasinghe will be removed from his position and Mahinda Rajpaksa will be appointed as the new prime minister. When Maitripala Sirisena took over as president, there were only about 40 MPs from the UNP and we have two-third majority. However, Rane Vikramasinghe was appointed as the prime minister at that point. Maitripala Sirisena took oaths as the president and then the prime minister took oaths the very next day. We had 147 MPs then. We will use the same method to appoint Mahindra Rajpaksa as the Prime Minister. At present, a majority of UNP MPs are supporting that government. We need a government and we need to go forward. We cannot dissolve it. When Gautabe Rajpaksa becomes the President, we will establish a government with more than 120 MPs. <laughs> Several opinions were expressed today at the media briefing organized by the Prime Minister. Announcement का करा अमेरिका वाले सामान्य एमसीसी ग्यूसोमोटर कैबिनेट के अनुमति ने बुनाई किया था देखा चांदी तो इससे ला संक्राइड न तो इनके पास से वो अभी भी इससे लगता है ना अभी डॉलर मिलियन हार चीज़ का ना काम नहीं हम भी ना ऐसी कपटी शेप करा this stance borne by the Prime Minister was criticised over the past few days by the Podujana Peramuna. Although more views in this regard were expressed by them today, there was no mention of any attempt by them to abolish the agreement. <laughs> It is fair to say that the National Economic Council should review this 480 million US dollar MCC grant and also reassess its conditions and other facts. What they did instead was dissolve the council. They kept that aside and presented the cabinet paper and got approval. This is a government which will only last another 13 days. By doing so, they signal the West that they are ready to become puppets of the Western countries and to please give us aid. <laughs> According to the information I received, a great debate had ensued at the cabinet yesterday with the president on one side and everyone else in the cabinet on the other. The president had then given approval to it based on certain conditions. My opinion is this will not be done during the tenure of this government. Maybe this is done to please America in the hopes of obtaining some campaign funds for the UNP. However, under a government led by Gotabe Rajapaksa, a decision will only be reached once a comprehensive review is done. Well, this was Namal Rajapaksa's response to Sajid Premadasa's invitation for an open debate. 
While watching TV, I saw Sajid Premadasa challenging Gota Be Rajapaksa for an open debate. He even invites Mahindra Rajapaksa, Namal Rajapaksa and Basil Rajapaksa. When Sajid Premadasa meets face to face with my uncle, what does he have to say? He will talk about pushing buttons, breaking rest, staying awake till dawn. So what's the point of a debate in the first place? He will say, I am not like Gota Be Rajapaksa. I have the strength to break rest all night. When Gota Be Rajapaksa says he will develop the economy, construct roads and provide tax reliefs, Sajid Premadasa will say, I will stay up all night. However, since he mentioned my name, I am willing to come forward for an open debate with Sajid Premadasa. Anyone can accompany him. After all, we are both from the same village. <laughs> This was the response of presidential candidate Sajid Premadasa regarding a challenge extended to Gotabe Rajpaksa. I call for a debate thinking about the people. We are giving an opportunity for the people to do a good analysis of our policies and the vision. Sajid Premadasa will not respond to proposals put forward by Hedgeman. I do not want a debate with an Hedgeman. I want a debate with my opponent. We will commit to reducing the tax burden on the people by introducing a flexible system and cutting off direct taxes. We will also commit ourselves to uplifting the living standards and create a beautiful country for the people. Parliamentarian Harshana Rajakarna extended the challenge in Minuangoda today. Sajid Premadasa Mattu Mattekka Gotabe Rajpaksa is no competition to Sajid Premadasa. Sajid Premadasa invited Gotabe Rajpaksa for debates from time to time. Namal Rajpaksa says, let's debate once the policy statement is released. But if a debate is required, Namal Rajpaksa will join Sajid Premadasa for a debate. Who is Namal Rajpaksa compared to Sajid Premadasa? That is like the land and sky. Namal, if you want to join me for a debate, I am ready at any time. We will never flee like Gotabe Rajpaksa. Meanwhile, former parliamentarian Sajin Divas Gunavardhana also extended a challenge. Those who voted against our government told us something. They said they voted against people like Mervyn Silva and Sajin Divas on our side and not Mahinda Rajpaksa. What happened then? Mahinda Rajpaksa was defeated. The country had taken a step back. Mervyn Silva and Sajin Divas joined the ruling party. They are now serving Namal Rajpaksa as henchman. I am not surprised because I was a henchman for about 15 to 17 years. So I know how it is being done. I also feel sorry for you. So I ask you to come and speak to me instead of pointing fingers at me. Let's start from the presidential election of 2005. Let's speak about how we face the election with Prabhakaran. We can also speak about corruption, violence and topics about MIG deals. There are about 10 to 20 topics we can touch on. We can talk about additional secretaries and people like Senarath reached into deals. I have all this information. Even Namal Rajpaksa can join this. There is no issue to that. <laughs> State Minister Vasanta Senanayaka convened a media briefing today. I was of the view that I should tender my letter of resignation to President Sirisena and resign from my respective ministerial position. In fact, I have already prepared this letter. However, after a statement was made by a so-called wise man last night to remove me from my position, I have decided not to resign. I will remain in my position and will continue to do so. I make this statement in response to the person who challenged me. I challenge him to remove me from my position. Only the president of this country has the power to remove me from my ministerial position. After the 52-day government, they promised that I will not be penalized by the UNP in any way. They said I will be recognized and valued. And they even promised to give me a position in the cabinet. They came to me and begged me to rejoin the UNP. Many are not aware of this. I have CCTV installed at my residence, so I have proof of everything. I have photos and video footage of every single individual who came to my house that day. As a gentleman, I refrain from releasing these. 
Certain individuals visited me 16 times. Another statement was made recently claiming that I have been removed from my party membership. How can anyone make such a decision? I have no charge sheet against me. There has been no disciplinary inquiry against me either. As far as I know, I only raised the question as I was of the view that this is a democratic country. Some talk about dictatorship. In that sense, if I can't raise a question, I wonder where dictatorship is. I received a few phone calls now, one from the party chairman as well, claiming that what had happened was a mistake. I said, if it was a mistake, release a media statement in this regard. In the past few days, I did not receive a satisfactory response to this matter. Therefore, I had drafted a letter stating my intention to withdraw from politics completely. I wanted to send this letter to the president this morning, but I did not send it. I will now remain in my position. Let's see if anyone can remove me from my position. However, if I am removed as a support of Sajid Premadasa, I will continue to support him. This was my initial decision. However, after all that unfolded in the recent past, I am forced to reconsider the decision as well. If anyone from the party is supporting a presidential candidate other than who we have nominated, we will suspend their party membership or remove them from the party. That's why the General Secretary has done something like this. But Vasanta Sena Naika has clearly stated to us that he has not taken a stance of that nature. He has been very clear that he is supporting Sajid Premadasa. Vasanta Sena Naika has been supporting the campaigning activities of Sajid Premadasa as a member of the party and a minister. Welcome back to the news. The Defence Ministry has announced that military personnel and police officers who are on active duty are not permitted to engage in any political activity or process except casting the vote. The Ministry of Defence stated that military personnel either in active service or currently in retirement, including officers belonging to the police force, have to avoid the use of publicising any material with their image in official uniform. The Ministry further emphasises that any efforts taken by said groups to work to either support or promote any party candidate through any statement, images or any such material is a punishable offence. The Ministry goes on to add that for a free and fair election, it is important that the Army, Navy, Air Force and Police Force act in a free, fair and impartial manner. Postal voting for the 2019 presidential election is scheduled to take place tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. The instructions for all postal voters have been listed down on the back of their identity card form. It is prohibited to photograph voting centres or the applications with or without the vote cast on it. Those who vote at district secretariats, election officers and police stations can vote on the 4th and 5th of November. The contesting candidates can send one of their representatives to monitor the counting of votes. Cast your vote for the presidential candidate you prefer without any fear. A total number of 717,918 had applied to cast postal votes for the 2019 presidential election, out of which 659,514 applications had been accepted. Therefore, the rejected number of postal votes is 54,404. The most number of postal voters for this year's presidential election have been reported from the Kandy district, with the number being 59,945. It has been scheduled to carry out postal voting tomorrow and the day after at all state institutions situated across the country. Police personnel have been approved to use their postal votes on the 4th and 5th of November. The police officers who are unable to vote via postal votes on those days can use their vote at the divisional secretariat. The police station is attached to on the 7th of November. If postal voting is being conducted at a particular state institution, campaigning within a vicinity of 500 metres from the institution will be prohibited. The media spokesperson of police also spoke regarding complaints relating to the presidential election. Um, 
Janadipati Varne Tadalava. 32 complaints in relation to the presidential election have been lodged. A total of 48 breaches of election laws have been reported. A total of 38 individuals have been arrested thus far. Among those 38 individuals are two Pradeshya Sabha members. One represents the Panduas Nura Pradeshya Sabha, while the other is the deputy chairman of the Valallavita Pradeshya Sabha. There is a former Pradeshya Sabha member as well. He is a former member of the Palmadulla Pradeshya Sabha. A police sergeant is also among the 38 arrested individuals. He had caused damages to promotional material at a party office. But moving on uh, with the bulletin tonight, presidential candidate of the new Democratic Front, Minister Sajid Premadasa, attended public rallies held in the North, North Central, Eastern, Northwestern and Western provinces today. A public rally was held in Minuangoda in line with this. UPFA MP Ron Ranathunga pledged his support to Minister Sajith Premadasa during this rally. Minister Sajid Premadasa also attended another public rally held earlier today in Vaunia. There were several communities that were directly affected by the adversities of the civil war. I am too a member of a family that was directly affected by the war. I can understand what you are going through. After ending the war and establishing peace, the first thing that should be done is to gather the international community and hold conferences to gather funds. I can promise you that once I am elected, I will hold fund-gathering conferences for the North and the East. I will bring down all the powerful nations with developed economies down to the North and the East and under my guidance and supervision, make sure that the North and the East gets the development that was withheld from them for 10 years. We will rebuild build the tanks. We will develop a hydraulic civilization under the name Vari Udava and with that we will build the agriculture of this nation and through this program we will strengthen the farmers of this nation and ensure a good future for all of you. <laughs> This is how the people of Madhavachya Anuradhapura welcomed presidential candidate Minister Sajid Premadasa. Former Minister W.B. Ekanayaka pledged his allegiance to Minister Sajid Premadasa at this rally. <laughs> In the recent past, wages were increased by 107%. I promise to do the same under my governance. I will sign a pledge with the farmers of this country in the days to come and I will ensure that all the clauses of this pledge will be turned into a law in this nation and I, Sajid Premadasa, will lead this nation into a golden era of agriculture. <laughs> Presidential candidate Minister Sajid Premadasa also attended a public rally in Kirulapana. <laughs> 
Kara muna ki me mihi tala ye Ratama ekata ek vanada dina ye Siusiya dahasin hadavat bandu na ha Ekma ikiriyata yana maka hadu na Ekma ikiriyata yana maka hadu na During the public rally held last evening at Kirlapana, Colombo Urban Councillor Uma Chandra Prakash extended her support to Sajid Premadasa and joined him on stage. I will provide two sets of uniform material and a pair of shoes to all students. I will ensure all students are treated equally. My opponents don't understand this as they have no heart or soul. They only have practiced to murder and abduct people. My opponents are experts in the field of violating human rights. We will empower our children to ensure that they will value humanity and take this country towards development. The responsibility of constructing houses will be taken under one ministry and by 2025 I will solve the housing issue across the entire country. There are issues with land deeds of houses. These land deeds are required when enrolling your children to school. As the future president of this country, I will ensure all of these issues are resolved. Sajid Premadasa is the son of a man who was killed by terrorists. Sarat Fonseca is someone who was injured while defeating the terrorists. With these two powerful individuals on our team, how can national security be of any concern? Some are of the view that national security means holding the position of defense secretary or looting from deals where MiG aircrafts are imported to the Air Force. Some think it's about constructing memorials for their parents from public funds. We must defeat them and the defeat must be initiated from for 25 years since losing Rana Singh Premadasa, we did not have a president from the UNP. Today, after 25 years, we have in front of us a president who has won the mandate of a majority, a president who can unite all communities, a president who will solve the problems of everyone, empower women and strengthen the economy. Rana Singh Premadasa never involved his children in politics. One day, MP Duncan Fernando invited a young Sajid Premadas on stage for some reason. The next day, MP Duncan Fernando scolded MP Lawrence Madhuvela, stating that Sajid was too young and he should not be involved in politics. When Minister Sajid Premadasa entered politics, he had to work very hard. He was then appointed as an organizer. He was elected to parliament in 2001. He then served as the deputy minister of health. Afterwards, we were all part of the opposition. He was then appointed as the minister of housing, construction and cultural affairs. On the other side, there is someone who has never been part of parliament. How can he take the country forward? How can he initiate development in the country? Today, we can all speak of the development taking place. I challenge Gotabe Rajpaksa to come forward and present an effective and efficient plan as ours. Gotabe Rajpaksa to Vedika Villa. Presidential candidate of the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna, Gotabe Raj Paksa, addressed several public rallies today. Vishwayapura, Vihidi Kia, Podujana Jayara Ave, Api Venu and Napiatara Managena, Bala Porotu Ame. Gotabe Rajapaksha was given a warm reception at the public rally held in the Ruanvalla public grounds. In the long term, we plan to abolish the exam-centered education system that is currently in place and introduce a more student-friendly education system. We nurture students' skills from young ages. We will hold workshops for the students as well. We have a clear plan to resolve the issue of unemployment of the youth. We face many challenges and succeed. We are ready to face the challenges of today and the future too. I provided leadership to the end of the war as Defence Secretary together with the President. I served in the Army for 20 years. I served as the Secretary. 
I have a great understanding on how the public sector works. We were able to develop the country with less political interference. We have to train the state sector employee. We must also work on providing a sufficient salary for state sector employees and provide the required facilities as well. We promise to provide a transparent state service to you. That will end fraud and corruption. Gunat mak minimi dewa yang penen raja serve akta mulaan sila tapi laba denna perun tu benu. Leader of the SLPP Mahindra Rajapaksa addressed several gatherings held in the Norelia district. A gathering was held in Rikilagas Kadavala. To do anything at all, this country should be in one piece. If the country is divided, there is no point in going any further. The resources of this nation, the land of this country, they all belong to you. The ones who are born here, the people of this nation. What did they do to the airport, the port and the highways? They sold it to foreign nations. They are reading their plan to sell the other resources. They have stolen the birthright of generations to come. This is what this government did. They open projects that we started and in the opening ceremony, they get up on stages and sling mud at us. We still listen to them. You need to understand this situation. The SLFP and the SLPP have joined hands together and are conducting our election propaganda across the island. When we combine our votes, we are assured that we can have a majority of 70%. <laughs> Another rally was conducted under the auspices of leader of the SLPP, Mahindra Rajapaksa, at Nildanda Hin, Walapane. Today, as soon as I came, I was made a grandfather. You call me father or uncle. Today is an unforgettable day in my life. I believe that you must be rich after selling your pepper crops for 1,400 or 3,000. How much is pepper selling at these days? This is how much. Not even that. Farmers can't sell their pepper crops or not make crops. The reason that the situation has arisen in the country is because of a wrong decision we took back in November. As soon as this government came into power, they cut down on the fertilizer aid. They didn't stop from there. They stopped 100,000 acres of cultivation land. Where did they store all of that crop? In the Matala airport. They made another paddy storage facility in Jaffna. But the only thing that they can store there are seaplanes. That's how much of water that has flooded the area. Presidential candidate of the People's Power Movement, Anuru Kumar Adisanayaka, attended a public rally held in Kinya Trinkamali yesterday. Many politicians and civil activists were present at the rally. We are ready to take up the responsibility of the security for all nationalities. We will defeat extremism. The war ended in 2009. They couldn't even sustain peace in the country for even 10 years. Could they prevent a bomb blasting in this country even after the end of a 10-year brutal civil war? They failed, didn't they? They failed as leaders of this nation. These leaders need conflict in this nation. If not, how can we explain Zahram being paid through Gotabe's security account? Presidential candidate of the National People's Party, General Mahesh Senanayaka, engaged in a tour of Jaffna today. General Mahesh Senanayaka, who arrived in Jaffna by train, was warmly welcomed with Hindu traditions and customs. Subsequently, the presidential candidate who visited the Naga Viharaya called on Chief Incumbent Venerable Megha Kandure Shri Vimalathero and obtained his blessings. This war was a result of politics and politicians. Therefore, politicians have no right to say the war ended because of politics. 
However, all security forces, the tri forces, the police worked hard to save the general public. This was a humanitarian operation. We all worked together, and that is why we were able to put an end to the war. We were able to put an end to the war. We were able to put an end to the war. We were able to put an end to the war. Well, we now cross over to the News First newsroom where News First Chaturanga Haparachi is standing by. Chaturanga, what do you have for us? Good evening to our viewers. We are joining you from the newsroom. Now, senior DIG retired, Ravi Vaidya Lankara, the former head of the Financial Crimes Investigation Division of Police. As we know, the FCID uh, was in the center of controversy with regard to a statement he made on electronic media on the 25th of this month. News First on Sunday, that is the 27th, aired a special report on the activities of retired senior DIG Ravi Vaidilankar, the former head of the FCID, based on a B report submitted by the Criminal Investigations Department to court. Now, with regard to this report, retired senior DIG Ravi Vaidilankar has sent News First a letter of demand. Permit me to read a line of this letter of demand to you. Singular News broadcast on the 27th October 2019, you made the following news statements directly targeting and affecting my client, his wife and the family. I quote, Hitapu Jeshta Niyoja Polispati Ravi Vaidhalankarage Paule Samajik and Mudal Vishuddhi Karna Chodhana Birinda Samaga Ratin Panayai. Letter further reads, my client and his wife returned to Sri Lanka in the morning hours of the 28th of October 2019 after attending some professional activities in Dubai. He neither left or had no intention to remain outside Sri Lanka at any time. This is what is mentioned in the letter of demand sent to News First by retired senior DIG Ravi Vaidilankar through his lawyers. Now through his letter he demands 300 million Sri Lankan rupees as damages. Now we are absolutely happy that senior DIG retired a former head of the Financial Crimes Investigation Division of Police, Ravi Vaidilankara, has arrived back in Sri Lanka. Probably he could not hear the statements made by the Justice Minister Talatha Atu Korala on the day we aired this special report on Sunday. So we can now have a listen to what Talatha Atu Korala, the Minister of Justice of our country, had to say on that day. Vaidya Lankara, who was appointed to nab thieves, have been nabbed by thieves. He was brought for money and now he is not even in the country. He retired a few days back from the Financial Crimes Division. He swept all the cases against Rajapaksas under the carpet. He did not conduct a proper investigation. The Attorney General's Department did not have legal grounds to initiate a court case. Now his wife and son have been summoned to courts. They are claiming that we have asked them to accuse the Rajapaksas. Those were the views expressed by Tata Atukol, the Justice Minister of Sri Lanka, on the day we aired the report, but obviously before the report was aired, this was during the day on Sunday, the 27th of this month. Now, keeping that aside, the police media spokesperson, SP Ruan Gunasekara, was also questioned today regarding the activities and the controversy surrounding the man in the picture, retired senior DIG Ravi Vaidilankara. This is what happened there. This probe is being conducted into a group of people, including the wife of retired senior DIG Ravi Vaidilankara, Pati Rajage Mary Basilika, and his son Asela Jayampati Raja Sundara Vaidilankara. He also obtained a court order on the 21st of this month to gather information regarding 14 companies, including the one named Surya International Corporation Private Limited and 75 other financial institutions. This B report consists of many pages. Anyone can obtain a copy of it for their perusal. You can understand how the scam has occurred and which laws have been breached. Further investigations into this matter are being conducted based on the guidance of the Attorney General. It should also be mentioned that the spouse of retired senior DIG Ravi Vaidilankara had been summoned to appear before the police FCID on two previous occasions. However, she has failed to appear before the FCID and the officials at the FCID have those on record. Further, the spouse and son of Ravi Vaidilankara have been summoned to appear before the FCID again on the 4th and 5th of November, respectively. The second probe is being conducted against retired senior DIG Ravi Vaidilankara by the Special Investigation Unit of the police headquarters. The probe is being conducted under log number 82 stroke 2016. This complaint has been lodged at the Special Investigation Unit of the Police Headquarters on the 14th of September 2016. 
It has been launched by a person named Nimal Chandraratna Koral. He is the managing director of a firm named Komutu Engineering Private Limited. In his complaint, he has said a special investigation is being carried out by the FCID into Komuti Engineering and that retired senior DIG Ravi Vaidilankar has requested a sum of 75 million rupees to end the investigation. Further, the complaint states, since the sum had not been paid, the investigation had been done in a partial manner detrimental to him. The complaint was examined by the Special Investigations Unit of the Police Headquarters and analytical reports relating to telephone conversations have also been obtained. The summary of the investigation has been directed to the Attorney General for further guidance on the 5th of April 2019. Further, another complaint had been lodged at the Special Investigations Unit of the Police Headquarters under the log number 26 stroke 2019 against Ravi Vaidalankara. This complaint had been lodged by a woman since it was revealed that the complaint was merely lodged due to a personal dispute that log has been closed. Apart from that, I am unable to comment on an alleged media briefing which he has held. In more local news, the Catholic Bishops' Conference in Sri Lanka calls on citizens to discern wisely and courageously on the choice of presidential candidate. Issuing a statement, the Catholic Bishops' Conference said the chosen presidential candidate should be a person of integrity to work in close collaboration with all to safeguard the freedom and rights of the people. The release added that the president of the country should rise above party policies. The Catholic Bishops' Conference also called on the leaders of the country to commit themselves to ensure that religious extremism and racism is eradicated and peaceful coexistence among all ethnic and religious groups is vigorously pursued. The release further noted that it is incumbent upon the future president and leaders to take drastic measures to eradicate corruption at all levels. It added that all citizens should be mindful of the rights and also the duty to use their vote freely to further the common good. Issuing a communique, His Excellency Dr. Diane Jayatilaka, the ambassador to Russia, has responded to allegations levelled against him regarding a presidential candidate. In his release, His Excellency Dr. Jayatilaka highlights that at a meeting held yesterday with the participation of several politicians representing the Sri Lanka Podhujana Perumuna, they had named him being involved in a plot to implicate presidential candidate of the Sri Lanka Podhujana Perumuna, Gotabe Rajpaksa, in the April 21st attacks. He adds, quote, not a shred of proof is presented for this accusation. The accusation itself is totally false in every single aspect, unquote. He also says that he is not engaged in any effort with anyone to implicate any presidential candidate in the April 21st attacks. The communique further states His Excellency Dr. Jayatilaka has not had any connection to the names mentioned by the SLPP camp and that he does not have any involvement to the alleged implication. In his release, His Excellency Dr. Jayatilaka states, this issue is merely an example of disinformation, stating that the main fact behind this issue was a Facebook post which he had shared on his Facebook account. Finally, His Excellency Dr. Diane Zayatilika states, quote, I share many posts which appear on my Facebook wall, but if I agree with the sentiments, I say so. In this case, I did not and desisted from any comment whatsoever, unquote. In a report published by the National Geographic Society assessing women empowerment around the world, Sri Lanka has been ranked 107th out of 167 countries. The report measures 11 subcategories of discrimination such as legal discrimination, domestic violence and financial access to assess women's empowerment around the world. At 107th, Sri Lanka ranks well below half the world. Despite scoring relatively better in categories such as education and organized violence, Sri Lanka scored poorly in terms of community safety, employment and scored the worst in the category of government representation. Meanwhile, Norway topped the list with Switzerland following closely after. The United States of America stood at 19, while the first Asian country was Singapore at 23rd. India was ranked at 133. The part point... The Pathfinder Foundation rather, has presented a national security strategy for Sri Lanka.
The Pathfinder Foundation, in its national security strategy for Sri Lanka 2020, provides the following recommendations. Sri Lanka must establish an efficient and effective system of security and vigilance spearheaded by the competent intelligence service without violating the rights of citizens. Understanding the combined efforts of all NGO operations, international human rights conventions and similar other UN instruments being made on state sovereignty. The proposed National Security Council should consist of a permanent secretariat and headed by a National Security Advisor who should be a competent person to discharge responsibilities of the office. The powers and responsibilities of the NSA need to be clearly defined, taking into consideration sensitivities of the military establishment and security requirements of the country. Speaking exclusively to News First, former professor of the University of Peradeniya, who played an important role in formulating the Pathfinder Foundation National Strategy, Sisira Pinnavala expressed the following views. First, you need to identify what the complexities are. Right. We wanted to make our focus citizen and state centre. That's the reason that we distinguish between human security, which is not actually national security concern, but more long-term issue that had to be dealt with long-term solutions. Chairman of the Pathfinder Foundation, Bernard Gunatilaka, also expressed the following views regarding the SOFA agreement. The 1995 SOFA agreement, the United States wished to have it extended and they submitted a draft for consideration and uh, when uh, uh, some elements of that agreement came out, there was a fairly big uproar. People were wondering whether it is the right kind of agreement why we are signing it, what are we getting out of it. So far as uh, so far is concerned, it is not reciprocal. It is only uh, providing certain kind of services and facilities to the United States military, uh, where we do not get anything in return. Then there were, I mean, uh, certain elements of the SOFA, which was not available in the 1995 agreement which provided facilities for the United States forces to uh, come into the country without passports, without visas. Uh, they, they, they could bring their own equipment, vessels, aircraft, whatever it is. They could uh, wear uniforms and carry weapons. Uh, and we uh, will be getting into a situation where if there is going to be a conflict between the United States and another power, and uh, Sri Lanka will be in a difficult situation because we are providing all these facilities to the American forces. A number of projects connected with the Uma Oya multi-purpose development project was declared open by President Maithripala Sirisena today. The Puhulpala Reservoir, coming under the Uma Oya multi-purpose development project, was declared open by President Maithripala Sirisena this morning. To commemorate the opening of the reservoir, the president also planted a sapling in the vicinity of the reservoir. President Maitri Pala Sirisena then went on an inspection tour of the Karagolla underground power plant, also part of the Uma Oya development project. This power plant is expected to generate up to 120 megawatts of power and is due to be vested with the public next year. State Minister Ajit Manna Peruma Deputy Speaker Ananda Kumaraswamy and Governor of the Uwa Province Maitri Gunaratna were also present. Agriculture and waterways as well as the power and energy sector in this country are facing various difficulties. With regard to this project, especially if you look at our total investment along with Iran, it is around 100 billion. The most important aspect of this is the generation of electricity. It is a project that will broadly contribute to the growth of our national economy. It will contribute a new dimension to our economy. This Umaoya project will contribute to a chapter and a new economic revolution. This is the impact this Umaoya project will have. One of the main reasons that led to this project being stalled were the international sanctions imposed on Iran. Those economic sanctions on Iran affected this project greatly. We would like to thank the people who faced difficulties when we were carrying out this project. Uh, Meanwhile, President Maitri Palasirisena also initiated the filling of the Handapangula Reservoir in Vallavaya. <laughs> He will have Mahapulot, Barak Nui, Tamayutukamitukarapu. 
നായക്കാട്ട് The president then proceeded to the ceremonial filling of the Alikotar reservoir which is also part of the Umaoya multi-purpose development project. And that's a wrap up tonight's edition of Prime Time News. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Mahina Bongzil and I'm Shahin Jarampati. Good night and take care.